Hey folks, just imagine this, a big collector with peculiar items discovers a film that could end the world because it's the movie John Carpenter's Cigarette Burns. So, brace yourselves for the end, and let's recap. A man is summoned to a grand mansion hidden in the hills, and as soon as he arrives, his host is waiting. John starts looking around because the owner had an extraordinary collection of rare items, especially rare films that few people knew about. John sees a poster for the movie The Absolute End of the World and finds it very curious because, as the stories go, this film was destroyed, and they could only screen it once because, according to newspapers of the time, people started going crazy, and they all ended up deceased. John asks if the film wasn't destroyed, but Mr. Bryan says that was just a legend. He was sure this film still existed somewhere, and he needed to find it because it was something unique, and he was willing to pay whatever it took. John starts to get suspicious because he was willing to do anything for a rare film that they say causes people to pass away. Behind his desk, there was an exclusive piece from a film, but it looked incredibly real. Brian says he would show why the film still existed. In his other collection room, he had an angel trapped with its wings cut, and the angel was all pale. He says he knew the film was still good because his soul was trapped in the film along with other angels. They needed to prevent it from being released. Looking at this angel, either we couldn't understand, or it was the crack angel. Brian says he would pay whatever John asked for and add an extra $100,000, plus the first two weeks of box office earnings would be his. It seemed like an irresistible offer, so he asks for $200,000 because it would be a lot of work. Brian hands over a folder with the last known locations where this film was seen. He goes back home to think about what to do. This guy is so cinema-focused that he lives in a movie theater with his friend. He asks his friend what he knows about this film, but he says it's just a legend because it was only screened once, and everyone started passing away because that film is cursed. John starts remembering his wife because, in the past, he was a vagabond, but her father got him a job, and something happened, and she ended up deceased. A guy shows up looking for John because he owed a lot of money, and he only had a week to pay it back, or it would be his end. Now that he needs to finish this job, his friend says he found an old critic who wrote a review of the film but isn't sure if he would say anything. However, since he has nothing left to lose, he decides to go to the location. The guy lived in a house in the middle of nowhere, and John asked to talk, but he didn't want to answer until John inquired about the review he had made for the movie The End of the World. At that point, he opened the door, and when John arrived, the guy looked worn out and didn't want to interact with anyone. He said he had been chosen to review the film, but when he watched it, he didn't have the courage to speak the truth about it. Instead, he wrote a superficial review and fled because he feared the people who made the movie might come after him. However, he had recorded his real review and had never been able to forget what he saw that day. Many tried to cover it up, claiming there had been an accident during the movie screening when, in fact, people had started going crazy. He handed over the last copies of his real review and warned John never to watch that film because just talking about it could cause a lot of trouble in his life. And here's where the question comes in, what leads someone to want to watch a movie that everyone says not to watch because it's going to end badly? Well, I don't know, but I recommend that you don't like the video and don't subscribe, because if you do, you'll end up with other low quality videos, so it's up to you, and it's at your own risk. Upon returning home, he starts listening to the review, but it begins to mess with his head, and he starts having nightmares about his deceased wife. John receives a call from an acquaintance who asks what he's searching for, but when he mentions the film, the guy tells him to stop looking because this film only brings trouble into people's lives, and one must be deserving to watch it. To make matters worse, he hands over a list of producers, critics, and those who watched it in the first week. Researching, John finds that all of them are deceased, and he realizes that this so-called friend knew something and was hiding something about the film. Here comes the first revelation because John goes back to confront him and asks why he was doing this. He explains that on the day it was released, he worked as a film projector operator and had nothing to do with it. However, when the film started playing, even without looking at it, he began to go insane and couldn't control himself. Luckily, he fell onto the projector, stopping the film, otherwise, he wouldn't have survived. He says he tried to be a good friend and keep John away from that film 
but since John was determined, he gives him the address of a guy who ended up with some props from the movie and probably had something important. He arrives at the location, but there are two men waiting for him at the door. Any normal person would go back home, but he asks the taxi to wait. That's when we see trouble coming because he's taken to a warehouse, and a bald man is waiting for him with some items. He asks why John wants that information, and John replies that it's for a client. When he starts examining the items, he sees various photos of angels being captured, as the person who made the film was taking it very seriously. The bald man tells him to hold John because now he will understand the film, and he is sedated. When he wakes up, the bald man is wearing different clothes, and the driver ends up being taken as an example and passes away. He starts explaining that if you manage to survive this film, you become a messenger of the word and must take it to everyone, so everyone should pass away. However, John starts feeling something strange, as if the angel that was trapped had been helping him. Everything starts flickering with a low-quality effect, and suddenly, everyone appears to be deceased, and John manages to escape. Among the items, he figures out where the creator of the film is. However, the closer he gets, the more he feels affected, even without having watched it. When he reaches the creator's house, his wife explains that he was the first to find him, even though he had never left where he started because everything protected him. She reveals that he passed away, but his soul remained in that house until the end to stay with the film. She no longer wanted to keep it and needed to pass it on to someone, and since he was the only one capable of getting there, he could take it. As soon as he arrives at Mr. Brian's house, he starts feeling the power of the film, realizing that it would cause chaos. So he decides to have some champagne. When he returns home, he notices his friend isn't there because the guy he owed money to took him as collateral. However, he claims to have the money and believes everything will work out. He goes back to Mr. Brian's house, but when he arrives, his trusted employee is acting very erratic and says that he will pay for bringing that film into his house and passes away. When he meets Brian, he says he has never felt this good before and now understands the meaning of life. However, he acts strangely, stating that he no longer needs the film because he's created version 2.0. He begins to place his entrails into the projector, which makes it seem like he has been infected by the film. To make matters worse, the man to whom John owed money appears to collect his debt and asks what's happening there. John tries to tell them they need to leave, but they both realize they are sitting down, watching the film. Both of them start going crazy and get into a fight but John manages to survive. The problem is that the angel has managed to break free, thanks John for bringing the film, and explains that it wasn't the end of the world, it was just a glimpse of what would happen to humanity. The angel takes the film and John ends up deceased. So, folks, here we've learned two things. If someone tells you not to watch a film, it's probably best not to, and if a pale guy claiming to be an angel shows up, call the police, because it's likely the effects of drugs. Leave a like if you survived, subscribe if you want something better, and now I'm out. Thanks to everyone and peace. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me.